Hello, this is uh, Richard Silverstein of Tikkun Olam. Shaul Chorev is the director of the Israel Atomic Energy Commission. He had his laptop stolen yesterday. This is the second time in three months a sensitive piece of electronic gear has gone missing from the home of a senior Israeli official. Last December, it was the cell phone of Brigadier General Yoav Gallant stolen from his home. It's also the second time in a number of years Chorev's laptop was stolen. The thieves this time stole his wallet and documents as well. Horiv is a man who lives in the shadows. No one knows much about him. During his military career, he rose to be deputy commander of the Israeli Navy. One of his roles as IAEC chair is to advise the prime minister about Iran's nuclear capacity. As such, the IAEC provides projections for Mossad in nuclear-related matters and receives all information generated by the Mossad concerning its efforts uh, with, uh, in uh, evaluating Iran's nuclear capabilities. Horev was known to be in the midst of conducting high-level briefings, security briefings, for prominent Israeli politicians. Naturally, it's quite embarrassing for a senior Israeli government official, privileged to the nation's topmost secrets, to have his own computer stolen. There's no telling where the computer has gone, who now has access to, to the material in it, and what secrets have been compromised. During the night, three thieves broke into his home in Beit Yitzchak, where he lived with his wife and two daughters, and they stole his computer, or so the story goes. Israeli media has revealed the theft of the computer, but not the identity of the victim who lost it. Ask yourself, why the military censor should prohibit reporting of this. Will it make a difference to preserve the identity of the theft victim? Will it make it that much harder for Israel's enemies to figure out who he is or what material may have been compromised? Israel boasts of its military and intelligence advantages over its enemies. It can, so the story goes, penetrate the most secure defenses of its enemies. Israel, on the other hand, is impregnable. Its security assets are secure. What's important about this story is that Israel is beset by a major case of hubris. It creates a narrative that arrogates to itself permanent domination over its enemies. It foresees no weaknesses, no vulnerabilities, except when there are. There's another delicious irony in this scandal. Israel several years ago persuaded the world in an allegedly stolen Iranian laptop containing top secret documents about its nuclear weapons program had mysteriously come into its possession. The laptop was a fraud, as was its supposed theft. But this laptop is very much real. And if the thieves were associated with Hezbollah or Iran, the data is already in the hands of Iran's chief nuclear scientist. That's the guy that Israel tried to assassinate several years ago and failed. The reason is important for the world to know the identity of the alleged victim, which I offer here thanks to the outrage one Israeli feels towards the security lapses of the elite, is that secrecy works in Horev's favor. He would never be held accountable if the censor had anything to say about it. Even with exposure, he's likely to get off scot-free. That's better off than Ben Ziggier found himself. As I've written here, Ben was expendable. Israel rarely holds the powerful um, accountable for their lapses, while it often holds the average citizen accountable, especially when they're poor or weak. Shaul Harev has proven himself to be a major security risk. He will get away with compromising the nuclear secrets of the state because he works for the prime minister and you can't embarrass her, the PM. This is yet another example, another bit of hypocrisy in the annals of the national security state. Thanks a lot. This has been Richard Silverstein.